What's up Outdoorsman, Greg here and today I'm showing you everything you need to know about Amsteel and saddle hunting. Alright, today I'm showing you everything about Amsteel. First of all, I'm going to show you how to splice a fixed bridge for your saddle. Second, I'm going to show you how to make a secondary lineman's belt as a backup for going over limbs, around, around branches, stuff like that. Finally, I'm going to show you how to splice a bridge onto an existing saddle. And we're going to do something called a lock stitch. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Now, you might say, why would I want to use Amsteel instead of climbing rope? Well, one, it's much lighter. Uh, it weighs five or six times less than a traditional climbing rope of the same length. It's smaller, it's less bulky, uh, oh yeah, not to mention, it's stronger than traditional climbing rope. So, those are a few reasons why you'd want to use Amsteel, and now I'm going to show you the best way to use it for your saddle. First of all, let's talk about the tools you're going to need. This is the Samson Splicing Kit. I got this on Amazon. It's a little pricey, but I use it a lot. It comes with all sorts of tools. Not all of these. A lot of these are ones that I've made on my own, but it is a fantastic option if you're going to splice a lot. You can get these at Walmart. It is called a kneading, knitting needle. It comes in packs of two, just like you see here. And what I do is I end up DIYing a little project for these and I cut one on a 45 just like that with a hacksaw or a Dremel or whatever you have in your garage. No big deal. And it makes a perfect fit for splicing amp seal. These are the fids that come in the Samson splicing kit. They're a little bit nicer, a little bit better. Got some built-in measurements. They got the 45 already cut. They're great. This is a pusher. It comes with the Samson splicing kit. It makes pushing your berry through the end of the amp seal a lot easier. This is a loop turner. It's made by Dritz. You can get this at any craft store. It makes working with small amp steel very, very easy. This is a wire, small gauge wire that I made a little loop, and it makes burying your amp steel much, much easier. I got this from Ernie Power. It's like Chinese finger trap material. I'll show you how it works a little bit later. Uh, fits into itself just like that, and it helps, like I said, with making a berry. Here's the math. You're going to start out with 48 inches. You're going to leave about 8 inches for your loops. You need about 8 inches of berry on either side of your am steel. That's going to come out to about 16 inches. And then finally, it's going to leave you with about 24 inches for your fixed bridge. All right, let's get started. We're working with quarter inch am steel blue. It's super strong, easy to work with. And first thing we're going to do is measure out about 8 inches for our loop. We're going to know that that's how much we're burying and what I'm doing is just fluffing up a little piece of am steel since it's a hollow core. There's nothing inside there so that's how I make the measurements. I'm basically just eyeballing about where I want the loop to go and then I make marks on both sides. That's where I'm going to end up fishing each side through. And again, you can make it as big or as small as you want. I just kind of eyeball it, and uh, like I said, those are what I use to know where I'm going to make my first splice. Here we go, making the first splice. You just basically put your fid through the am seal. You want to go right in the middle. Uh, you don't want to cut any threads in half, so just take your time until you get the hang of it. You just push the fid through nice and slowly, and then you put the uh, free end or the tag end into your fid and push it through and it goes really easily you can see that's how your loop is going to be formed and you're going to pull through your second mark you see that second mark that's where i'm going to fish the main line back through the tag in and that's how you make the locked brummel you can see my berry right there it's about eight inches that's going to go back into the main line and now we're going to go ahead and make the second part of the locked brummel so again, I'm using a different fit here just to show different options, uh, but it's the same exact thing. You push your fit through the center of your am steel, and then you run this time the main line back through the tag end or your buried in. And you're going to see that what that's going to do is it's going to make like a figure eight. And that figure eight is a locked Brummel. And you see here when you pull it tight, it locks it down. It can't go uh, back through itself. This is important because this is where the strength of your knot comes through. It's not really a knot, it's a splice, but uh, you can see once you pull it tight, it locks back onto itself and it's impossible for it to come through. The only thing that's going to uh, 
come loose is if your rope breaks with a 8,000 pound breaking strength uh, you're pretty safe and you can see here the length of the berry it's about 8 inches and that's what you want to bury back into the main line it's real important uh, that you go a little bit past the length of your bury whenever you uh, are making your mark on the main line just like I did where I fluffed it out you see how it's about an inch and a half longer you need that because as you fish this berry back through the main line which I'm showing you right here your rope your main line rope is gonna expand a little bit so if you only make your mark right at the end of your berry or your free end you're not gonna have enough rope uh, or excuse me your your uh, your main line is not going to cover your berry totally so you want to go about an inch and a half past the length of your berry or your free end uh, and right here I'm just fishing the fid down through the am steel the main line and I went to that mark the puffed out mark that I made just a moment ago and that's how you know that it's long enough the next thing that you're gonna want to do is you pass that berry uh, or your free end same thing you're gonna put that into the fid and this is where that pusher is gonna come in really handy you need something to push that fid uh, along with your berry through the am steel main line it makes it much easier with this pusher and as you can see here I'm just pushing it down all the way through and then that is my berry and what you're gonna see is uh, it's going to disappear inside the main line now what you can do and what you should do really is you should trim that free end or your berry at the very edge you want to give it a nice taper and the way you generally do that is by cutting a few threads but I don't do that here and I probably should this is your last step to making your berry is you just milk it down and as you can see that berry totally disappears in the main main line now you have a completed locked Brummel splice. You have the strength from the splice on one end, and you also have the strength from the constricting mainline am steel. Now we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side to finish uh, the complete bridge. Uh, so I'm making my first splice here, just like I did before. Push the first uh, first end through, and then you're just going to eyeball the length of your loop. Now let's see that again. Okay, you're going to make your first mark. This is going to be the length of your berry. You push the fid through, and then you run your berry end or your free end down through the middle. And that's going to end up being the length of your berry. See, that's real important. Okay, now we're going to make the second splice. Now remember, this time, your main line or the other end that we've already spliced, that has to go back through. Okay, that's how you make your figure eight and do your locked brummel. The, the free end goes through the the rope once to make your loop and then your main line has to go back through your uh, tag in in order to make the lock if you only do the free end twice it won't lock and you'll find out real quick why it's not working so there you go so I passed the loop through it can be a little tricky um, but I got it through and now I have two locked brummels the only thing left to do is to make the bury to make your bury I actually left this one a little short it's only about six inches but again I'm going in about an inch and a half past the length of my bury and that's gonna give me enough room you come up really high next to your locked Brummel to start your splice start it up about as high as you can again I'm going through just like we did on the other side I'm pushing the fid down through the main line and that's how I'm going to bury that splice uh, you can use a loop turner here, you can use the tool from Ernie Power, you can use lots of different tools, but on a quarter inch am steel uh, line, a fid works really well, a fid in conjunction with the pusher. Now we're just pushing that berry back through just like we did the first time, uh, and I'm going to grab the pusher here in a moment and just push it through exactly like we did the last time, uh, and then you just remove it. Uh, pull it tight. You want to pull your, your berry line nice and tight to make sure you got it all the way down and then you just milk that main line back down um, and that's going to encapsulate your berry line just like that. There you go. Now it is a completed 24-inch-ish uh, uh, bridge for your saddle. It's 100% done with two lock brummels, two berries, and that is super, super strong. Next, we're going to make a secondary bridge or a whoopee sling out of 764 AM steel. You can see the difference in diameter here, but it's still really strong. It's about 1,800 pounds for the 764. 
And first thing we're going to do is make a splice for our loop. We're going to follow exactly the same procedures as we did on the quarter inch am steel bridge. Uh, the first thing we did is we marked about the approximate length where we want our loop to be and our berry. And we're going to pass the tag end through the main line. It's important the, dis the, the distinction here. The first splice is your tag end through the main line and your second splice is the main line through the tag end. You have to do once through each. So now we're making the second splice for the main line to pass through the tag end. Uh, and you follow the same exact procedures. You go, you push your fid kind of right through the middle of the line and you make sure you don't split any fibers as best you can and then you just kind of pull it through until it gets tight. Uh, nothing too technical here. The important part is that the first time you go tag in through the main line and the second splice is the main line through the tag end. It's very, very, very important or your locked Brummel will not work. See, so you get your figure eight there. Uh, I've kind of already pulled it tight there, but there you go. There's your figure eight. And then when you pull on your loop, you can see it just tightens down, <clears throat> makes that locked Brummel and it is ready to go. Now the only thing left to do is to bury your tag end uh, into the main line and uh, follow the exact same procedures. Go down a little bit past uh, the length of your berry and then for this uh, I'm showing you here with a little bit of, a little plastic crochet needle. Sometimes it's helpful in this smaller diameter line to go ahead and make a bigger channel uh, because sometimes it's hard to fish the the tag end down through there and so I just use this little plastic needle just to make the rope a little bit bigger and then I'm gonna use a wire here this is just a small gauge small gauge twisted wire uh, and I, I run it through and you can see I've got a little bit of a loop there tag uh, made into it and and all I do here is just uh, widen the loop a little bit and then you're going to push your berry end uh, through that little loop, tighten it down so it grips nice and tight. And uh, again, with the small line, this can be a little bit tricky, uh, but it's not rocket science. You just got to get that berry down through the main line. So I just kind of pull down and, and uh, fish it through, back through the main line, all the way down. And then just like that quarter inch, you're going to see that berry line come through the end. And this is where you could uh, you could taper your end a little bit. That's the right way to do it. I should have done it here, but it's pretty simple. And I can link to a video, but I'm just going to milk it down until your berry disappears into the main line. Now you have a completed locked Brummel. The next thing you're going to need to do is make an adjustable end. And the way you do that is you make a long berry, but you don't terminate it inside the end of the rope. So you're going to have a free end that passes through that section right there, and it makes an adjustable loop. I'm going to take a loop turner now. This is a really good tool for splicing this small diameter am steel. You're going to go through the mark that you made closest to your locked Brummel end, and you're going to fish it all the way through, just like we've done uh, in the past. And you're going to come through to that second mark. Uh, and that's going to be the length of your constriction or your berry inside your main line. The, the difference is, is there's going to be nothing that terminates inside that main line. You're going to run your line all the way through and pull it out the end to make an adjustable end. So this is the end of the line uh, and you're just going to push that through that tiny little loop and then close it. There's a little lock right there. I just closed that little lock and that's going to hold it in there uh, pretty well. And then you just push it through just like we did uh, before on making the bridge. Uh, you're going to work that back down through your berry and again what you're going to see as I pull it through is it's going to form a loop at the other end. That's going to be an adjustable loop and that's how you're going to uh, adjust the size of your lineman's belt. So you can make it smaller like I'm doing here or if it's a bigger tree you can pull that back out and uh, make it a bigger loop for a longer lineman's belt. And then once you pull on it and once you weight it, that uh, six or eight inch uh, berry that we made right there, it's going to constrict and it's going to lock down. This is essentially a, a whoopee sling that we've made, but we're going to use it for a lineman's belt purposes. Uh, and again, this is completely adjustable for a bigger tree uh, or a smaller tree. You just adjust this loop right here 
And the last thing that you're going to want to do is that free end that you buried through. Just going to want to tie a stop or not. You could make a splice if you wanted, but just the easiest way is to just tie a nice overhand knot. And what that's going to do is going to keep your uh, your berry from going back into the rope. Uh, so you're always going to have that tag in to make an adjustment. And that's it. Finally, I'm going to show you how to do a bridge on an existing saddle. And we've already done this a couple times making that locked Brummel. So I'm not going to demonstrate that again. And here we go. It's complete. I've made the locked Brummel on one lineman loop of my saddle. I'm using a sit drag here and I've just made the berry of about eight inches and you can see that is not going anywhere. So I've captured one loop of the sit drag with a locked Brummel. On the other end you don't have two free ends of rope so you have to use a lock stitch. That is 300 uh, pound test fishing line and this is Am Steel Zing It or Samson Zing It. Excuse me. I'm going to use the Zing It just because it's easier to see. Uh, but you're going to want a secondary cord uh, where I'm using the yellow zingit uh, to make a lock stitch. And what you can see right here is I'm measuring the length of the berry. And again, you're using about 8 inches uh, is, is what you need to bury right here. And I'm just kind of measuring, just like we did before, where I'm going to bury this. The, the difference is, is I'm not making that locked bromel here because, again, I don't have the free end to work with so I'm just gonna push that fid down through the rope just like we've just like you've seen uh, many times before in this video uh, pushing it all the way down and what we're gonna do is make a berry here uh, and then we're gonna have to lock stitch that berry because again we don't have the ability to do a locked brummel because I only have one end free now if I wasn't trying to capture the loop of my sit drag there on the left uh, I would be able to do a locked Brummel with only one end. But since I'm capturing that loop right there, you see I've just captured the loop of my sit drag. Uh, so that makes it to where I can't do a locked Brummel. So I'm going to go ahead and bury this about 8 inches down uh, through the main line or through the bridge, uh, just like we've done before. Uh, just pushing that through. And the difference here is now I'm going to have to lock stitch it. So uh, remove that fid, pull it tight. And then uh, you just want to make sure that you have the loop size exactly where you want it. Uh, and then when you milk it down, it's gonna, you're going to see it's going to drop into the main line just like uh, if you were making a locked Brummel. The difference is if I pulled on that loop, it would come right out. Uh, you can see right here, I'm going to pull on it a little bit, and you'll see that uh, that loop is... The, the constriction holds it once it's weight. Once it's weighted, it doesn't go anywhere. So... The, the, the heavy lifting is done by the constriction rope, but when it's not weighted, you can see that loop would come undone very, very easily. That's why you have to lock stitch this thing. Uh, but again, as soon as there's weight on it, th that is, it's impossible for it to come down because that hollow core rope constricts on itself and, uh, and it holds it in there tight. So what I'm doing is right at the base of that berry, I'm pushing my fit through. This is this can be a little bit tricky. Uh, it's it's hard not to go in between the fibers, which you don't want to do, but uh, sometimes it's kind of difficult not to do. So you're just gonna push that fit through and try try your best not to catch any fibers. But if you do, it's okay because um, this lock stitch really is is not gonna cause any problems. So the first thing that I'm doing is I've I've got about 12 inches of zing it. And that's what I'm using to, as my lock stitch. I'm going to fish it through and leave about half of each, uh, each side of the zingit. So six to eight inches on both sides of the, of the rope where I'm going to lock stitch. And essentially what you're going to do is you're going to do three to four stitches on each side of the rope. So I'm going to do the first on the top side. Then I'm going to come perpendicular and come back to it and do on the side of the rope. What you do is you... You measure about three fibers or, or three strands, and then you push your rope or your lock stitch rope. I'm going to just call it zing it from here on out. That yellow line is zing it. And you just make stitches. You go back and forth. You count three lines, uh, three strands in your bridge, and then you make another stitch. So one, two, three, and then I'm going to go through just on the top, and I'm trying to go stay perpendicular or 90 degrees so it stays nice and even on both sides. I'm just speeding it up here because there's really uh, 
nothing to really explain as you're just going to go one, two, three, and then push it through, one, two, three, and push it through, one, two, three, and push it through. And you do that uh, three to four stitches is what Amsteel recommends uh, on their tutorials. And if you were to uh, go by the, by the book, you're going to want to do three to four stitches on top. Then you're going to want to do three to four stitches on the side. Now that I'm finished with that, we have to go ahead and make another row of stitches. We see that we've done it on the side. We're going to come back through. We turned our rope 90 degrees, and then we're going to make uh, four more stitches uh, on, perp on a perpendicular side to the ones that we just made. So uh, all I'm doing is I'm taking my fid and I'm following the same exact procedures. Where that rope is doubled up, I'm pushing my fid through and then we're pushing that lock stitch through and what we're what that's going to end up being is uh, three to four stitches uh, on both sides and then again you're spinning it 90 degrees and you're going to make three to four more stitches and that is going to complete your lock stitch once it's done you've got to have those stitches uh, on the top and sides or 90 degrees perpendicular to one another for the most strength again you're just going to count one two three stitches uh, shove your fid through both ropes and then follow that procedure uh, all the way down the rope until you end up with the appropriate amount of stitches which or lock stitches which is about four on each side and uh, you're just going to go ahead and, and do it all the way down until you get to the end. Now that we're at the end, uh, it's time to terminate that lock stitch, and the way you do that is pretty simple. Um, you're just going to tie a big square knot. Uh, you get the, the, the lock stitch rope or the zingit, you get that um, on the same side so you can have it right next to each other. And that's what I'm doing here is I'm making that very last lock stitch and that's going to put my zingit right next to the other piece of zingit. So now I've got two tag ends of zing it right next to each other and what I'm gonna do here again is just gonna tie a simple square knot and uh, that's gonna get shoved back into the zing it so it's nice and terminated and that is a finished lock stitch end of your bridge that is going nowhere again the lock stitch is just keeping that tag end or bury in place uh, but the constriction of the rope is doing all the heavy lifting. You can see there it's complete. I'm going to also link to another version of that lock stitch from Amsteel so you can see that in a little bit greater detail. Thanks for watching.